This video explains how to calculate the maximum and minimum value in the Python programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the Python code. In the first example of this tutorial, I will show you how to calculate the maximum and minimum value of a list object. And for this, we first need to create an example list, as you can see in the first line of code. And then we can use the print function to print our example list. So after running these lines of code, a new list is appearing below the code box. And as you can see, this list contains different numeric values. Now let's assume that we want to return the maximum value of this list. Then we can use the max function, as you can see in the second code box. And within the max function, we simply need to specify the name of our list object. So in this case, our list object is called my list. And then I'm also using the print function to print the output of the max function below the code box. So as you can see, in this case, the maximum value of our list object is the value 9. Similar to that, we can also return the minimum value of our list using the min function. So after running this line of code, another value is returned, which is the value 1. And this value corresponds to the minimum value in our list object. So in this first example, I have explained how to calculate the maximum and minimum values of a list object. However, it's also possible to calculate the maximum and minimum value of a pandas data frame column. And this is what I want to show you in the next example. However, before we can do that, we first need to create an example data frame. And for this, we first need to import the pandas library, as you can see in the fourth code box. And then we also need to use the data frame constructor of the pandas library to create an example data frame. So after running these lines of code, a new data set called data is created. And we can print this data frame using the print function below the code box. So after running these lines of code, you can see that our data frame contains 10 rows and three columns, whereby the first two columns, x1 and x2, contain numeric values. And the third column is a group indicator that we will use later on. So if we want to calculate the maximum value of a single column, then we can apply the code that you can see in the sixth code box. So in this case, we are first subsetting our data frame, or more precisely, we are extracting the column x1. And then we are applying the max function to this column. So in this case, the maximum value of the column x1 is equal to the value 9. Similar to that, we can use the min function to return the minimum value. So in this case, the minimum value of our column x1 is 1. It's also possible to calculate the maximum and minimum values for all the columns in our data set by simply applying the max function to the entire data set, as you can see in this line of code. So after running this line of code, a new output is returned, which returns the maximum value of each of the columns in our data set. So the maximum value of the column x1 is 9. This is what we already know from the sixth code box. The maximum value of the column x2 is 19. And you can also see that the max function returns the maximum value based on character strings. So in this case, the maximum value of the group column is C. Or in other words, the last letter of the alphabet that is appearing in the color group is the letter C. Similar to that, we can use the min function to calculate the minimum value of all the columns in our data set as you can see in the code box number 9. In the previous examples, I have explained how to calculate the maximum and minimum values of the columns of a data frame. However, it's also possible to calculate the maximum and minimum values of the rows of a data frame. And this is what I want to show you in the next example in the 10th code box. So if we want to do that, we first need to specify the axis argument to be equal to 1. So this tells the max function that we want to calculate the maximum value by row. And then we also should specify the numeric only argument to be equal to true to exclude all the non-numeric columns from our data set. So in this case, the group column. 
So after running this line of code, another output is returned. And as you can see, this output contains the maximum value of each of the rows in our data frame. Similar to that, we can also calculate the minimum value of each row in our data set using the min function. So as you can see after running this line of code, another output is returned, which shows the minimum value of each row. In the final example of this tutorial, I want to show you how to calculate the maximum and minimum value by groups in a data frame. So in order to do that, we also need to apply the group by function. And within the group by function, we need to specify the column that we want to use to group our data set. So in this case, this column is called group. And then afterwards, we need to apply the max function. So after running this line of code, another output is returned, which shows the maximum values of the columns x1 and x2 based on the groups in the column group. So for instance, the maximum value of the column x1 in the group A is the value 7. As in the previous examples, we can simply replace the max by the min function to calculate the minimum value by group. So as you can see after running this line of code, another output is returned, which is showing the minimum values by group. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.